The men and women who came to protest Prime Minister Apasit's visit are unlikely revolutionaries. They come from a quiet town in Isan, Thailand's impoverished northeastern province. But this is Taksin's heartland. Populism and the power of the rural poor have been dangerous forces in Southeast Asian politics over the last half century. Cambodia, Laos, Burma and Vietnam have all experienced bloody social upheavals. <laughs> Thailand, never colonized and with its 700-year-old monarchy intact, had appeared resistant to the political tides of the 20th century. Until Taksin, that is. He's different from any other politician I know. He and his advisers are not from the ivory tower. They came to meet with people, asking them what they want, and they went back to work on the policies. Kwan Chai Papana's background is typical of many Taksin supporters. He refers to himself as having been born a child of the fields, but nowadays he's the big man of Udon Thani a town in Isan. A successful DJ and record producer, he runs the pro-Taxin radio station. Despite Taxin's enormous wealth, much of which he gained through being part of the political elite, he is still seen by his followers as a man of the people. Udon Thani used to have flood problems. Twice a year, politicians used to come here. They looked at the problem and then went back to Bangkok. But nothing happened. Taksin came down. He took a helicopter and looked around. Then he came up with a design. He cut one row which let the water flow down. Since then, we've never had a flood problem. <laughs> In 2001 and again in 2005, Quan Chai and people like him voted in Taksin, with 2005 bringing the highest voter turnout in Thai history. Taksin's opponents claim that he bought these elections, but Quan Chai denies this. <laughs> It's not true. Every poll is saying that we're not going to win, but we won a landslide in many areas, and we don't have money. All the other parties have our money instead. If we have election today, we red shirts cannot be bought by money, and we will win. For his opponents, Taksin is little more than a corrupt opportunist. They point to the dubious share deal that led to his family netting nearly $2 billion tax-free from the 2006 sale of his telecoms company, Shincor. But for his supporters, Taksin is their voice. His platform is very much uh, driven by uh, populism, catering to the masses, giving them what they wanted. Uh, but what they wanted was something that uh, had been neglected for, for decades. And this meant um, opportunities and hopes and dreams of a better life uh, for Thai people in the countryside. Uh, it was okay for them to be farmers, to be uh, menial workers in Bangkok, but they wanted uh, uh, something more for their children. And uh, Thailand has never been the same ever since. And now this, this mass is that he uh, uh, awoke, uh, have refused to go back to, to sleep. But the political elites and the military refused to accept this new reality. In September 2006, while Taksin attended the UN in New York, the army moved against him, deposing his government, outlawing his party, Thai Rak Thai, and freezing $2.2 billion of his assets. Thailand has changed indelibly by the coup, but not in a progressive direction. The coup was really a contest between a new Thailand um, in the 21st century that will e inevitably emerge, and Thaksin was an, a, an accelerating agent of that uh, new Thailand. 
Hyraktai's leaders reconstituted themselves as the People's Power Party and guided by Taksin's hand and popularity won the 2007 general election. Having again failed at the ballot box, some of Taksin's enemies formed a new party and took to the streets. Yellow, the traditional colour of the monarchy, became their theme. Without a hint of irony, they called themselves the People's Alliance for Democracy, or PAD. Now, the, the contest between uh, the vision of political future of Thailand, represented by two groups of color, the yellow shirt and the red shirt, is now being contested. On the one hand, the yellow shirt who represent the conservative forces in Thai society want power to be taken away from the electorate. They want to turn back the clock to 1970s or 1980s, where elections were merely ceremonial to endorse the power of those with most wealth and support from the military. That is the vision of the yellow shirt. Violent street protests followed. A constitutional court intervened and deposed Prime Minister Samak in September 2008 on the curious charge of moonlighting as a celebrity chef. Taksin's brother-in-law, Somchai Wongsawat, took the premiership. In anger, Pad's yellow shirts seized first the parliament building and then the airport, paralyzing the country's tourist industry. The army refused the government's order to move against the Pad. Instead, the same court that deposed Samak now dissolved the government. Apasit was appointed prime minister. But Thailand's politics was now to be found on the streets. The red shirt, they cannot accept military intervention in any form, direct or indirect. Of course, they cannot accept a coup, and they cannot accept that the current administration of Prime Minister Pisit Vejajiwa was formed inside a military barrack. We will continue to see this uh, confrontation between the red and the yellow colors in Thai politics. It may flare up on the street, it may flare up in the parliament, or it may flare up even on issues related to foreign relations of Thailand. Rally and counter-rally have become part of the scenery in Bangkok. Today, the red shirts are marking the anniversary of the 2006 military coup. Their hero, Taksin, may have been convicted in absentia of corruption and sentenced to two years in prison, but this hasn't diminished these people's faith in their leader. The party atmosphere that's continued throughout the day has gone well into the night. As you can see, there's still tens of thousands of people here. In fact, it seems that there's more people here now than there was earlier in the day, and that's not just because of the rain. The key thing is, the real political rock star at this festival is just about to appear. Even in exile, these rallies ensure that Taksin remains both at the heart of popular politics and a thorn in the side of Bangkok's elite. But the establishment have shown that they can play the game too, pressuring those countries that have given Taksin sanctuary to rethink. Living without a permanent base, he has moved four times in the past three years, staying in touch with a very modern use of media. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear and see me? Yes. Good. It's very, very good of you to, uh, to join us. I'll tell you what I have a problem with is that a man who has had a relatively privileged background like yourself, who is a multi-millionaire many, many, many times over, you are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, is somehow a champion of the poor. I find that a little difficult to, to accept. I grew up in rural area. I work with, uh, you know, I help my father and my mother work from the bottom. So I understand the poor people. I understand. I saw the, the people in the rural area 
40 years ago and now not much different. So I would like to give them an opportunity. I want to help them. Your critics, you know this very well, say again and again that, you know, Thaksin Shinawatcha doesn't really care about uh, democratization and, uh, and giving a, a, a bigger chance to the poor. He's annoyed because the government has taken much of his money, hundreds of millions of dollars. That's what's behind this red shirt protest and, and your involvement in it. <laughs> you know, if you look at how the yellow shirt growing and how the red shirt going, it's different. The yellow shirts have used, they have money, they have the military personnel to help them. Uh, they've been uh, requested by the elite people to help them help the euro. But the red shirt, they do themselves. I almost, you know, in, in, I, I don't have to, to, to give anything to them. They come themselves. They feel like, you know, I'm, I'm being bullied. I'm helping them a lot Why I'm being bullied. You've called in April the whole Red Shirts movement as a revolution, or at least revolutionary yes. in spirit yes. and, and aim. Is it really? Or is it just yes. an attempt to get back into the country and power on your behalf and, and your, no, and no, your no. colleagues? No, no, no. I really would like the people to come together and, and change the Constitution into more democracy, democracy for people, not for elite for people, for all the people in Thailand. You're straying into dangerous territory here, Mr. Shinawatra, and I think you know exactly what I mean, because your most strongest opponents have taken the kind of things you're saying to me now, democracy for all, as somehow being under the surface, you know, Republican in sentiments, that you are against Thailand's no, no, constitutional no, no, no. monarchy. But no, that's, no. that's how what you say and what you believe is being painted. And of course, in yes. this country, right. that is very, very damaging. In the past, is the, the history of Thai, Thai politics. If you want to topple the strong leader, the only claim that they, they can use is not loyal to the king. Because the king is, is, he, is this beloved by the people. So let me ask you directly then, I mean, on the record now for Al Jazeera's international audience, you are absolutely for and loyal to the king. Definitely, 100%, more than 100% actually. Loyalty to the king is a Thai tradition. Many see him as the moral compass that steers the country through its regular periods of upheaval. Those who witness his increasingly rare public appearances feel touched by the experience. I had never thought or dreamt about it. I come here regularly on important occasions such as this. I'm a vendor, so I don't have time to be here all day like the others. And on that day, I was lucky I came here. I didn't think that the king would come down here. It was my good fortune that he came down here privately. I was told to stop for the royal procession. I thought it meant the prince or other royal family members were coming, so I stood and waited. But as I walked up a little, I saw a doctor pushing the king's wheelchair pass right here in front of the statue, and just like that, I hurried off to see the king. I had tears in my eyes. But for ordinary ties, tears of devotion are matched by fears for the future.